I'm Nadia Sawala, a working mum to my gorgeous girls, Maddie and Kiki. Not forgetting wife to Mad Mark. And then, of course, there's my dogs, Chi Chi and Toffee too. Growing up, dinner was always a family affair. With my Arabic father and my mum's obsession with all things French, mealtimes were tasty and exciting. Over the years, I've begged, borrowed and stolen cooking tips. I love to cook and I'm always in my kitchen. And now I'm excited to be finding out about the fabulous family feasts people enjoy around the world. Ah! <laughs> Taking inspiration from busy households for simple recipes. During the series, I'll be hanging out with some fantastic chefs and cooks from every country imaginable as they share the dishes they grew up with and love today. I just want to feed everybody. Every one of which we want you to have a go at. Oh. And if that wasn't enough, they'll be sharing the ingredients they couldn't live without to help you along the way. Oh, naughty. So buckle up and hold on tight for my fantastic family feasts. Pick a quick one. <laughs>
to fry the ingredients. So mm -hmm. it's better that you use our oil that's lighter and burnt on a higher temperature. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like sunflower, yeah. pine nuts, this kind of thing. Can we just have a little chat about my, my sausage peeling? Well, it's not going terribly well. No, <laughs> I can help you. I'll just uh, shush it together. There you go. Oh, yes. So now with the onions, they're just cooking down to yeah, soft? Soft, yeah. You yeah. don't want to burn your onion. Should make them the same size? Yeah, that's no, okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Very okay. rustic. Very rustic. <laughs> this is very rustic. We are definitely rustic, Masha. <laughs> they're going to stay, like, together, so they, don't worry if, if you feel yeah, right. them. In, in okay. Them. Okay. Now we can add, add the beans because the, you see the, the the onion has just a slightly yeah. color. Doesn't yeah. have to be brown. It's, okay? it's interesting, isn't it? Because I would have manically have browned those all perfectly all over before I started anything, but it's going to be fine. No, like no, that. no, it's fine. Great, this is, less time cooking. So this is our cannellini beans. Yeah. This is tinned, but you can also like soak in the water yeah. the night before. Okay. So the beans are in. So we've got yeah. the onion, the whole garlic cloves, the sausages, yeah. the beans. So now we put the bay leaf also. So do you always use fresh bay leaf? You wouldn't use dry, yeah. dried. Well, the bay leaf is one of the only herbs that says quite good also if it's dry. And this is our passata. This is where I'm obsessed with this. When I'm in Italy, I literally eat tomatoes like this. They're you just... Can, they're like an, you can have a, like an apple. Oh, yeah. they're so yeah. good. It's almost done. Mm. You probably noticed that I didn't add any salt to no. the recipe. There is a reason, because the sausage there are they're quite salty. Mm -hmm. So what we don't want is to have... Overdo the, it. Over, over, like, yeah, too salty. How long will that cook for now? This is going to be, like, about low, low heat for about half an hour and cover, so we... Half an now, hour? Half an hour. I thought it was nearly ready. Half an hour. <laughs> I already made the toast. It's fine. <laughs> you can start with that one. Carbon. Oh, it smells so good. Tell me it's ready. It's ready. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's ready, but we need to check on the uh, seasoning. OK. So... Can I have a little taste? Let yeah. me see. Yeah. Let me see if, 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 if I can know whether it yeah. needs seasoning or not. You see, it's like, it's ready. Oh, I don't think it does. It's gorgeous. Oh, that looks so good. Shall I chop some of the parsley? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. thanks. I don't know why I offered to do that in front of a chef, but there we go. You know me, I'm a glutton for punishment. Could you put basil with that? You can add some uh, basil. The only thing is, is the basil turns dark very quickly. So we just put a sprinkle on the top? Yes. Am I allowed to do that? Yes. I've got a sprinkle fear yeah. now. OK. Is that enough? Yes. Well, I've got a little stick in there, never mind. Yeah. And <laughs> we're finishing oh. with some uh, sour dough bread toasted. Yeah, which we I know. did ages ago, because I didn't think yeah. it was going to take half an hour. So this is oh. going to be our breakfast. Mmm, look at that. And can we eat it now? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> Are you going to have some? Yeah. Mmm, mmm, and you're right, they're tomatoes. You don't need to do anything else with them. Slight hint of garlic. I'm going in with the sausage and a bit of... This is, this is proper rustico mm. food. I have one of London's top Italian chefs with me, Masha Renner. But now I want to find out where her love of food came from. I grew up in countryside and uh, in, uh, in Umbria. Uh, that is like the central part of Italy between Florence and Rome. When I was five, my parents, they opened this uh, very tiny small restaurant in this farm and uh, there was like probably just about 15 seats. My mom, she didn't know uh, when she bought a house in Umbria, nothing about herbs, about cooking. So slowly, slowly she was going to the old ladies around the area to pick some secrets and start to learn how to cook with the wild herbs. I was constantly there to be with her and I really enjoyed it a lot. I, I was like, I was really feeling since then that that was probably become my job. When I was 19, I moved to London after the high school for a year to improve my English and we're still there. But, uh, <laughs> And, and, and this is how I discovered Lina stores. It's a, a delicatessen, an Italian delicatessen. First times was just to shopping, but the, the, the staff, it always have been super friendly. So this is how we become friends. And after this year, I went back to uh, run the family restaurant. And this was for about eight years, nine years on my own. 
Lean and people we kept in touch in the years. They, they called me and they said, well, why we don't do something together in London? And I was like, wow, but I'm not really sure that I can do it. Like, I, I've been all my life in the countryside. The plan was use uh, all the knowledge in the products and in the ingredients and use all this stuff for a restaurant. The menu is not large, but it's it, behind every recipe, there are like a storytelling that I can, I can talk about. Cooking for me is more than a job. Even when I'm home and I don't need to cook, I'm constantly cook. I constantly like I have friends at home that they come for dinner and I keep doing experiments and research on the ingredients. And it's also something that makes me relaxed. Like when I'm furious, when I'm when I feel the anger, if I get like something to cook and I'm around the oven and the hops and it, I, I feel much more calm and I can calm down myself. I think that cooking, it's more than a job because it's a, it's a way that you, you can take care of other people actually, you know, other people that you, that you love. When you love someone, you can just feeling what they need to eat. It's like, this is like the little magical part of cooking. So you do the dish that they love, and you're gonna sit around the table, you're gonna share your experience, you're gonna share your feelings. This is just magical, I think. This recipe is Croatian, and I picked this recipe because uh, my mom is Croatian. This is boja kasha, that means soup done from the grandmother and it's the typical supper that she used to prepare for me and my sister when we were like growing up in the countryside. It's a super, super simple recipe, but really reminds me back in, in the time when we were like sitting around the fireplace having this, it's like just, it's milk, semolina flour, eggs and salt. So it's just four ingredients. Mm. Yes, it's... Really, it's, it's a weird taste because it's an unusual taste for a soup. It just reminds me about my, my childhood. And uh, there are sometimes flavors that even if they are not super tasteful and great, it makes you anyway happy. You know, because it, it's, uh, yeah, it's like it's exactly the same flavor that I used to have 30, Five years ago, <laughs> that's a long time ago, yeah. <laughs>
In the water. In, in the water. So I'm going to let you do that. Okay. Show us proper Italian Another style. Another important thing is like a lot of boiling water. Show and us the salt. Show us that so, much. Yeah. Yeah. Again, twice. Salter than so salty as the has sea. Has to be quite salty the water. Yeah. So this is my mama's spaghetti. Okay, I'm so curious about this. Right. And okay. this is my children's favourite meal. So you, you you heat up a good old slug of olive oil. Oh, this takes ages. Right, Masha, can I move you over to this side? Yeah. i tell you why. I've put my garlic press somewhere and I can't find it, and so I've only got this and I always grate my knuckle. OK, so I... you want that I do for Yeah, you. and I don't want to How many this cloves dish. of garlic you want in this quantity of oil? Two cloves of garlic. OK. So I, I might turn that oil off now because I don't want the garlic to brown. I just want it to go translucent. So, guys at home, if you're making this, you want the garlic just to sort of almost just steep in the olive oil. So sometimes I heat the olive oil up and then just turn it off and let the garlic just oh. soften. Can I add a little bit of the water from the pasta? Don't you've spoiled it now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to tell you that. Sorry. Oh, no. She ruined it, Nicole. <laughs> She's already said it. Pretend she didn't say that. Edit that bit out. Actually, come on. You're, you're ignoring I... your spaghetti. OK. <laughs> Don't overcook my spaghetti. No. OK, so you see how the garlic now is just sizzling away. That's really nice. And what I'm going to do now is add some tomato puree. And the thing is, I always got really nice organic tomato puree. I do about two tablespoons like that. What's great about this is the sauce is cooked by the time the spaghetti is cooked. So I'm going to add a good pinch of salt. Mm. Is the spaghetti ready? That looks nice. So if you can pass me the ladle. So now, because you're pretending you didn't know this, I'm taking my ladle of, of, of um, water from the spaghetti because there's starch in it, isn't there? Right, yeah. So it gives you... This is the secret all, all soap for the good carbonara, good cacio pepe. Oh, I don't do it with any of that. Everything you should do it, should you? You use the, the, ah. the, the water the, where you cook the pasta because there is the starch inside of the pasta loose in, in water. OK. Bit of pepper. Yeah, they're done. OK, bung it in. Yeah. Always the pasta to the sauce, never the sauce to the pasta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Top Italian chef in London. Top Italian chef. Restaurants, delis. <laughs> oh, my God. When my mum sees this, she's going to go, Nadia, that was very rude. <laughs> she really knew what she was doing and you were telling her. So, anyway, so okay. I cook it a little al dente and then I let it cook down in the sauce a bit so that it goes a bit sticky. Is that wrong? No, no. It's perfect. OK. Oh, yum, yum. I've got my uh, butternut squash here cooled. You see that? You want that You want that yes, nice, it. sticky, caramelised bit. To that, I'm going to add my farro. Guys, you can use spelt instead or rice if, you, if, you, if you're finding it difficult. Yeah, but this is farro. a grain that we use quite a lot in India. So, putting that into my kale. OK. What about lentils? We seem to think that lentils, you use lentils a lot. Were we right? Yes. Yes, 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 yes absolutely. It's also like uh, we norcha. We have the lentils from Castellut. Di Norcia, that's like very, very famous ingredient. Like we call DOP in, uh, in Italian. Oh, okay. Probably you have a kind of the same. It's totally like a recipe from my re region. Oh, Even good. the pumpkin, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so she knows it. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. Okay, so that, guys, the farro, I just put it in salted water, cooked it for about 10, 10 minutes or so, just till it's tender. So look, that looks delish. So we're going to put that in it. And I believe you have brought a rather yummy ingredient oh, with yeah, you from like... your deli. This is... I don't know if it's, like, well-known ingredients or not. This is a ricotta. Yeah. OK, so it's a, a cow ricotta. But this one is also smoked. So the flavour, it's just amazing. Let me have a sniff. Oh! It's... And it's oh. typical from south of Italy. Like mm. Calabria. Mm. Uh... Oh, guys, try and sauce some of that. It's delicious. Would you mind? Um, I do the spaghetti that one up? For Yeah, you. and give me yeah. and the board. Okay. I'll use the board for my chicken. Where have I put my chicken? Oh, so that you smells want your lovely. Board here is fine. Yeah. 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 That's great. Thank okay. you, darling. <laughs> so heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy. Okay, there I've got my gorgeous chicken, which basically I just stuffed a load of heart herbs and butter and olive oil, cooked it first upside down, so all the juice runs into the breast and then turned it over for the last 40 minutes so that it's nice and brown on top. Okay. Let me get my chicken onto you my You want some parmesan on top of your spaghetti? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Look at that. What do you think? 
I'm not going to sing. I'm <laughs> think of a different Italian one. Come on, let's tuck in. Salad first. Be they're, honest, they're you can um, tell me. Yeah, Umbrian one, no? That's mm. like super Umbrian. Mm, you can taste the olive oil, yum. Right, you know what I want to do with the chicken? I want that. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I want the skin. <laughs> no. You have to try my spaghetti. Mm. Now, be so, warned, my children are watching. Maddie, okay. Kiki, watch. Italian chef. Mmm. They're really good. Yeah? Yeah. It's just, just like the perfect consistency because the um, texture, because also the tomato, the concentrate, just stick on the pasta. Mm, that's what you want. Do you hear that, guys? Sticky. Mm -hmm. And my salad is lovely. And my smoked mm -hmm. cotta. And my chicken skin is delicious. Oh, I'm getting so excited because it's almost time for Masha to make her legendary Italian pasta dish. And we're going to see it from start to finish. I'm so excited. But first, let's go and have a look at her top five ingredients. This is our, my five top uh, ingredients. The caper shoots, the anchovies, the quince apple jam, the passata, the tomato passata, the, it's like tomato sauce, and the dry pasta. Caper shoots are one of my favorite ingredients. It's actually is, is the plant of the capers. And you can see there is the leaves and the baby capers here. They taste like capers, but lighter. You just boil the potatoes and you dress your potatoes with this one. It's just amazing, the flavor that comes out. I think anchovies is one of my best ingredients ever. And uh, of course, it's like ingredients that you can use in so many different ways. But uh, I think like my best is the simplicity of have like a really good butter, homemade butter, nice bread, and a fillet of anchovies on top. That's, I can die for this, <laughs> like, really. Quince jam, it's uh, sometimes people like the Italians, they think there is no typical Italian, but actually is. This jam you can use, or like has a jam, like you can have like bread, butter and jam, but you can do also like, uh, if you want to go into something more complicated, you can do like a mousse with the, with the, with this one. If you do with the jelly and the whimpered cream, it's also really, really nice. So passata, it's uh, one of our main ingredients in Italy because our like famous pasta, pasta al pomodoro, it's done with the passata. So there are so, so many recipes that we use also the passata with the main course, with the, with the meat. Or uh, think also about the pizza. This is uh, the passata, like this is uh, what you use to do the pizza. Penne rigate. I don't like the other one, like the penne lisce. Rigate means it's the, the stripes that they have on it. In this way, you, 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 it keeps better the, the sauce. It's like the sauce sticks better on the pasta. Yes, these are my five top ingredients. Oh, wow, so Italian chefs eat dried pasta too? Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the homemade pasta is like really good, but it's more something for Sunday, for occasions. Uh -huh. Fried occasions. pasta is something that we eat like every day. Right. I do pasta or lunch or dinner, but okay. once a day. So, tell me so, about this, I'm a bit excited. Well, yeah, we, we're going to start with the sauce, because the sauce needs to be cooked for a while. The secret is that you get the oil red, like, yeah, very, very nice. So, I'm going to start first. So, it's a tomato sauce. It's called arrabbiata. 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 It means angry. Angry? Yeah, like, oh, oh yeah, not hungry. <laughs> not hungry. <laughs> like, <"Ur."> yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's because a tomato... there is a arabiata because there is the chili, so it's hot. Yeah. What's the pasta going to be? The pasta is going to be a homemade pasta, quite s s like simple shape to do also at home, uh -huh. and it's called mezzalune. Half a moon. Yeah, right. You didn't know I speak Italian, did you? <laughs> yeah, mezzaluna. It's very simple filling, but with the, I think it's really, really super Italian because it's a burrata filling. Is it just a soft mozzarella? Not really. No. Okay. Burrata filling with some ricotta cheese uh, and uh, salt and pepper. And so you, we will have like the, the white inside the, film, the, the pasta and the tomato sauce with the basil. So it looks 100% Italian. Like, wow. <laughs> and you've kept your seeds in, obviously. Yeah, if you don't like it too hot, you can take the seeds out. Can't yeah. You? And chop it garlic, just like this. Oh, but you don't oh, want to burn good. the garlic. Eh? No, so, yes. never burn the garlic. No. It's all over, the party's over once okay. the garlic's burnt. And before the bur starts to burn the garlic, you added the uh, pelati. 
so it's oh. the raw tomato because you want in this sauce you want the the, the pieces like the chopped okay so you're not and going for a puree passata no. feel you want to no. taste the, the arrabbiata you need to taste the the, yeah. the tomato this sauce to make a little bit more flavored you need also some concentrate tomato a little bit of brown sugar oh now controversial Controversial. Very controversial. Yeah. So you're not got faith in your tomatoes, Masha. But this is a, but this is something that we do a lot in Italy. Yeah. Every like it's you just give it that little kick of sweetness yeah. to the sauce. Salt. Mm -hmm. mm. And now usually I just add some basil like this. So this gives the flavor. I love that. But this is the way how oh. you give the, the, the flavour of the basil to, okay. the, to the sauce. Great. Right. So you're leaving that partially covered on a simmer for how long? Like half an hour. OK. Yeah. Oh, now it's time for the pasta. And you are known in the foodie world as the pasta queen. You even have a special headdress, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> put, put on your headdress, the pasta queen. <laughs> Do you always wear this in your restaurant? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it goes just like this. Oh. You're just so effortlessly gorgeous. <laughs> pasta time. Pasta time. I'm already excited just by the bag. Uh, Something yeah. about Italian. It's Italian. Cuore d'Italia. Cuore d'Italia. Like, heart, heart of Italy. So here we have the 300 grams of flour. I always prefer to do my pasta on a marble. Or... OK. So what you do, you create a kind of a fontaine. Fontaine? Uh, a well. A well. That a well. You do the hole quite big, because otherwise it's going to be tricky to do your egg and uh, so it goes three eggs for the 300 grams. Very important is the egg that you pick because you have to be careful on the yolks. So must free range, organic, depends. Like you can experiment with eggs yeah. to get some, like a dough that is yellow and yeah, looks nice. very yellow. Yeah. Uh, well, again, it's like, it's, it's with everything with you, isn't it? With your cooking, the ingredients are it's so It's all about important. ingredients, because yeah. there are not too many, so you, yeah. you cannot mess up with the ingredients. So oh, it's got olive oil in it. A bit, like, Oh, just I'm so surprised. A bit, a bit, a bit. Oh. So you start just to do the eggs inside. Mm. And always with your fingers? Yeah. Like, you can try with the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you knee. <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> So that's very sticky. Yeah, but it's going to get good. So what are the top tips then for making a really good homemade fresh pasta? So the ingredients for sure. First. First important. are the ingredients. I will say do it by hand. So you do that for what, about five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, OK. OK, I will put in a clean film mm -hmm. and leave it rest like for a bit. How long for? About 20 minutes, half an hour. Not in the fridge. You just leave it at, like, uh, uh, okay. temperature is fine. Cool. So now it's time for the filling. Yeah. Yes, goody. Here we have the, the burrata, the ricotta cheese, cow ricotta cheese. This is the bowl to mix the ingredients. Just a little bit of salt, pepper and olive oil. Tell us what a burrata is. I'll show you now. So the burrata is like this one, it looks like a mozzarella, yeah. but the inside is soft yeah. and it's like mozzarella dough. It's yeah. like cream and mozzarella wow. inside. So we don't want to throw away, of course, the, the, the outside because it's super good. So you chop it just a bit, this part. Like OK, this. so what else could you use if you couldn't get burrata? What about cheddar? No. <laughs> what, maybe change the dish? <laughs> Cottage cheese? <laughs> OK, yeah. OK, so we have, like, it's the equal parts of ricotta and burrata. So ricotta is? Ricotta, it's uh, a, cow, a cow ricotta. Mm -hmm. It's just a totally different technique. And it's very to... plain, isn't it? It's yeah. very, it, yeah. it has no flavour, actually. It just takes on flavour. Yeah. It's probably the cheese that we use most for the filling of the pasta. We have at the restaurant the nudie that is like the just ricotta and cheese with no pasta around. Uh-huh. That Because they are naked, no? Nudie means naked. No, I love that. They're naked. <laughs> they are naked. Come on, let's all get naked. <laughs> 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 Salt. Salt, yeah. yeah. Bit of pepper. Oh, I didn't think you were going to say pepper. And just a tiny bit of oil. Why has that surprised me so much that you've put pepper? I don't know, but... What was the purpose of that olive oil? Flavour or consistency? It's the flavour and, the, like, the, the texture, yeah, okay. yeah. You need some uh, little bit, uh, like, veg or fat inside. Fat, yeah. yeah. Oh, now it's time for the pasta. I think you should show me first, and then I'd like to have a little go, if that's OK. OK, perfect. OK. okay. Usually, the people just do, like, to don't let's stick the pasta together. They just put the semolina. Yeah, so flour. it doesn't stick. OK, yeah. it doesn't stick. 
My least on Tipa will be do semolina and white flour together. Did you discover that yourself then? Is yeah. that your little tri yeah. trick? Yeah. Because you love that, don't you? You love to you love to find tricks. You you're obsessed with cooking, aren't yeah. you? You do it all the time. You're all thinking the, about food time, yeah. and ingredients yeah, and yeah. yeah. All the time. Um, I do half and you do the other half. Okay. Okay. You want to, like try it now? You you can try okay. and we change the thickness. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh. you know what? Better that you start from this way okay. because it, oh. it, you just get into. Okay. okay. Yes. Ooh, que bella! Que bella! Que bella! Buenísima! Are you speak Italian? <laughs> <laughs> fluently, absolutely fluently. So is it going okay. again? No, no. Put it here. Okay. We do now on the. So where are we getting to? What number are we getting to? Uh, also, the thickness depends on which kind of pasta you need to do. Okay. I will say one and a half on this one. For mezzaluna. For mezzaluna, yeah, because you need to paste the... So whatever pasta you're making, whether it's mezzaluna, ravioli, spaghettini, whatever... Yeah. Is, it the, is the recipe exactly the same? Mm, yeah. Oh! Oh, it is really satisfying, isn't it? I can see why you love it so much. Wow, it's like magic. Go off in it, yeah? OK. Mmm. Mm? Mm -mm. OK. What I do, I just... To don't do a mistake and don't throw away too much pasta. Yeah. I put down, like, the circle so you can see how many you can get on one... Do about, yeah, a couple yeah. of portions. So, and you put the filling like this. So, is that a couple of portions? Usually eight, That's... yeah. Well, eight is like a. Eight for two people? Yeah. Because we are not used to have this huge portion of pasta. Yeah, you don't yeah. need. Sometimes That's why I... you're stood there looking like I'm that. All, I'm stood there was, looking like this. I was super surprised when I, when I started to go like an Italian concert pasta. They have two prices with two different sizes of pasta. Yeah. Is that but, terrible? And also because if you have, like, you, you want to taste... For this reason, our meals are, like, mm. so rich in courses. Yeah. No, you, you cannot have, like, uh, 500 grams of pasta just for the primo yeah. because it's too, too much. And now you finish. And you go, like, with your finger, mm. like this. OK? And after, you pinch it there. Mezzaluna, like this. Oh. OK? Little half, little half moon. Yeah. I'm going to have a go then. So what are the important things to remember when you're closing up these pastas to make sure they don't explode? First of all, that you pinch it really well. So we yeah. put some water also for this reason. Yeah. And another thing is that you start it from the middle, so you push all the air oh, out. Oh, because if right. you leave the air inside, it's going like, to explode. It's going to explode. So you start in the middle and go to the out and pushing out the air. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Let's get cooking. I put some semolina to absorb the extra moisture and also some white flour and this helps. Is this it? Are we going to put the pasta in? Well, we have everything. We have the water that is boiling and I didn't add any salt to it, so I will add, like, salt, always. Salt. What's all this then? The colander and the... Why have we got this? This is a quite rustic technique. <laughs> yeah, OK. You know, it's like, it's just easier to take it out. And it's much quicker to cook, isn't it, fresh Like, pasta? that's just going to tell you, like, this, the fresh pasta takes, like, one minute, wow. two minutes. Mm. So here, in the pan, I put some of the sauce. The pasta and the gnocchi, usually, you can recognise when they're ready, when they rise up to the top of the oh, water. Oh, yeah, good tip. So it's ready? Yep. Wow. Oh, and you do let a bit of that water go in? Yes. So I, I, I already told you, now, they, they, the sauce, I reduced the sauce quite a lot. Yeah. But I prefer to add it like the boiling right. water from the pasta yeah. that has some starch inside. And when I do the dressing, I usually do always like some fresh grounded cheese on top. Mm -hmm. Because if you put the cheese now, the cheese will stick on the pasta. Right. So this is going to be our mezzaluna with arrabbiata. For two. Anybody's wondering at home, this is this is a portion for two. It smells so good. They do look like pillows of loveliness, yeah. which is what you want. Mm. Do you want me to sing again? <laughs> do you want me to sing again? <laughs>
Dobre. Mmm, che buonissimo! Che bella! Che parmigiana! <laughs> so far, we have been feasting on Masha's gorgeous homemade sausage and beans for breakfast, delicious Italian herb roasted chicken with a hearty salad, and my super easy spaghetti for lunch. Now, I don't know about you, but it doesn't matter how much I've eaten, if somebody offers me a really good tiramisu, I just can't resist. But that is the point. There is so much bad tiramisu out there, so I'm so hoping my recipe will impress you just a tiny bit. So, first of all, folks, in here I've got some espresso. Now, proper espresso. espresso. OK, good. It must be it's strong. Not, it's not an instant coffee, right? Not an instant okay, coffee. Good. Of course, some of you will just make it in instant coffee, and that's up to you. But espresso is the proper way, isn't it? Yeah. To that, I'm going to add a splash of Kahlua, which is a coffee liqueur. Okay. And can you add some masala for me? Yeah. I'm doing this a bit differently, and I okay. hope this doesn't offend any Italians out there, but I'm doing it in a loaf tin, because actually it looks really pretty if it works. I made one last Tuesday and it didn't, it collapsed, so I'm hoping this one works. So I've got a double piece of cling film, and I made sure that there's a big flap and you'll see why in a bit, because at the end we're going to fold it over. So let's pop that out of the way. And I'm going to start making my mascarpone filling. So I've got my egg yolks, I've separated them and I've whisked up the egg white. Okay, there. And I'm putting in some golden caster sugar. Okay. And I'm going to... Am I doing it right so far? Am mm -hmm. I OK so far? Yeah, why not? <laughs> and I'm just going to whisk it till... You have to whisk it. I mean, you could do this with a hand whisk. Would you do yours with a hand whisk? No, mascarpone custard is always better to do with... Uh, oh. Yeah. oh, OK. Because you get more therm and uh, doesn't collapse. So have a look in there. You see how it's going nice and pale now? We want it pale. You want it pale and ribbony. A yeah. bit more. Just a little bit more. It's, yeah, it's good like this. It's yeah. good. Yeah, so look at that, guys, you see? So it's like a trail. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. OK. So that is ready? Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Goodness. I've got... Look, I've got the, one of the top Italian chefs being my sous chef. I love this show. Um, so now, to this, I'm going to add my mascarpone, but just half of it. Now I'm going to add my double cream. Oh, that's looking lovely, isn't it? Yeah. As long as you're putting the egg whites in and you're not bashing the air out, you're mm -hmm. going to be OK. But yeah. let's watch a proper chef do it, shall we? <laughs> So should okay. I do it like you give yeah. it to me? Yeah. 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 And so this is the you to want the, the white like really well like this. You put a pinch of salt. Yeah. This is yeah I do to yeah. stabilize the okay. egg, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So and you don't go like like all in one time. Uh huh. You just go like down and up, down yeah. and up. So the first bit you put in, you don't have to worry as much about the air, do you? You're just getting no. it in. Just get it in, in, yeah. And after the last bit. Yeah. You are super careful to fold and keep it this fluffy. Oh, look at that. Yeah? Yum. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Well, I quite like that. You just did it how I would have done it. I was expecting something a bit flasher. Yeah. I was expecting you to go... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK. Well, that's that done, then. <laughs> OK. So, first of all, we're going to dip our biscuits and we're going to try really hard not to eat them. <laughs> um. So we dip them and... That's also not a very important part of the dessert. Oh, right. How long are you going to seat the, the, the biscuits? What technique do you use? Counting one, two, three. Oh, really? <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah? Okay. Like that? Well, what or... I usually do, I do maybe like three per time. And I, I have more liquids, so it's just like one, two, three. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So, and you just... Wow, okay. One... Two, uno, due, That's, tre. Yeah, perfect. Quattro, cinque, sei. Oh. <laughs> Otto, nuove, dieci. Told you I spoke Italian. You go with first with mascarpone. Yep. Okay. First with mascarpone. Oh, look at that. Cook's pleasures. Okay. Beautiful. Do you want to grate that yeah, in for I me? Yeah, I prefer it here. Like, if you want, this is a meal, so you, if you keep the chocolate like oh, this. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So don't use, like, you know, just just um, milk chocolate powder. You want really good cocoa, yeah? Yeah. OK. So next, you start again now. So next we are going to go uno, due, tre. So do you want to do the next batch, Masha? Yep. Oh, yum. 
Uno, due, tre. There we go. I, I'm just imagining people all over the country making this this weekend and saying uno, due, tre. Yeah, it's right. important to say in Italian. Eh? Oh, it has, <laughs> it has to be Italian. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to get a good tasting tiramisu. After this, we've got another yeah, layer another, of a sponge, and then we've got enough. to keep enough yeah. for the top. That's perfect. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, last bit. I'm so yeah. glad you're doing that last bit for me. Oh. <laughs> I always tap dance at great cookery moments. Oh, this cocoa is so good. I don't think I've ever but seen a cocoa so, so because, uh, gorgeous. But it's also because if you put the cocoa in the chocolate now, it's not going to stick the, yeah. the clean thing. Well, that's what I thought. So we're going to fold it over and into the fridge overnight. Yes. Overnight, because One you want it day. to set... And you want, the, you want all the flavours to meld and you want it to come out with a beautiful shape. So I've got one here that... Somebody else prepared for me earlier. <laughs> Can we have a drum roll, please, folks? Whatever I tell them to do, they do it. Do you think it's because my name is in the title? <laughs> Just have a little ego buzz there. <laughs> Ta -da -da -da. Okay. People doubted me, but I did it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. oh. Mamma mia! Look at that! Oh! <laughs> oh my god, have I offended you with my recipe? <laughs> oh my god, what are you yeah. doing? That's for the knife. Because oh. if you want like to cut in a perfect slice, okay. it's better that you warm up the knife. So this is um, some more boozy cream. It's got vanilla in and uh, a bit of masala, a little bit of sugar. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? I have to say, I'm just a little scared of you and your blowtorch at the moment. <laughs> OK, so, more cocoa. Look at that. Don't look at the splodged cream. Just look at how beautiful this pick-me-up is. That's what tiramisu means, pick-me-up. told you pick I speak up, Italian. Yeah. Oh. OK. I love it. Oh, I can't wait. Here, I'm so... going to let you cut it with your hot knife. <laughs> sure, OK. So what you do is just you cut like very fast. Yeah, don't muck about. Oh, yum. Okay. Yum. Oh, oh, voila. Mmm. Okay. And you see the the lady finger? They are soaked just the, perfectly. Yeah. Because they are soft, but they are not too wet, and yeah. there is no They're not coffee. Broken. Yeah, mm. no coffee running out around the dish. Mmm, it's really good. Okay. Really good. Really. Well done. Oh, that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it really good. <laughs> so there you have it, Masha's gorgeous sausage and cannellini bean dish, an easy-to-make spread for lunch with a hearty salad, a roasted chicken and a super-easy spaghetti dish, Masha's ode to her love of pasta with her magical mezzaluna, and the perfect way to finish off any meal with my naughty but nice tiramisu. Thank you so much, Masha. Thank you. I've Thank learned you. so pleasure. much and I've eaten so many, <laughs> so much beautiful food. Thank you. Thank you. For now, arrivederci or ciao. Arrivederci. Ciao. 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 Arrivederci to formal. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao bella. <laughs> ciao bello. Ciao. 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 <laughs> ciao.